Hello dear viewer, I'm the political ferret and I wanted to talk about why direct democracy doesn't work. I mean, doesn't work at all. And this opinion of mine is to a very large degree the result of my personal experience from back when I was in politics. But perhaps I'm wrong. And in this particular case, I would love to be wrong. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about the big if. So, by the way, this is a podcast. Relax your eyes, there's nothing to see on the screen beside of a lazy montage of a ferret with a Greek helmet. <laughs> so, what's direct democracy? In a nutshell, it means that the citizens decide directly. The politics does the writing, uh, this, this whole writing job and will formulate laws and bills and all this funny stuff. But the decision, what has to be done, is only in the hands of the citizen. And the citizen alone. Yeah, okay, but why? Well, political parties tend to act differently than the population wanted them to act in the first place. For an example, since about the 1970s, there was the idea to change the Austrian hymn. And we're talking about the part, your home of great sons. And they wanted to call this daughters or sons of and daughters and whatever. And hey, did you know that the text was written by a woman in the first place? No? Yeah, well, who cares? Well, they did this uh, change in 2011. And since that, the hymn sounds a bit like somebody uh, hits the CD player on this very part. But however, to get this change done, they needed a majority of two thirds in the parliament. But polls sh showed that about 70% of the citizens didn't want the change. And by the way, about as much wanted <laughs> just a new hymn because the one we have sucks. Just by the way. And hey, is it treason to say something like that? Yeah, well, I don't care. So, over 66% of the politicians said yes, when 70% of the citizens said no. So, and some polls went way higher than this. And it absolutely doesn't matter if this thing was the right thing to do. That's not important. The citizen didn't want it, and the politics ignored them. So, in a direct democracy, this would never happen. Okay, sounds nice. What's the downside of that? Well, you as a citizen need to know quite a lot more about politics than to you do right now. And it's absolutely a lot of work to get into all this stuff. And I would go so far to say you can't live as a citizen a normal life and do this politics stuff and decide more or less the stuff that now our parliament does. But... What we are talking about is nationwide politics, and this stuff is very, very complicated, even if you simplify it. And it's a pile of complicated stuff, and it's... it's bleh. But if you go down, say, not even to town level, go a little bit de deeper, say, uh, the district of a town, the stuff becomes absolutely understandable. A typical district with, say, 20,000 uh, inhabitants need about, say, 20 relevant political decisions a month. And most of them are things like, do we repair these or do we buy that? And do we give the sport club um, some more money? Things like that. And also the costs uh, of this stuff is in a range you can, as a normal citizen, absolutely understand. I mean, try to imagine 10 billion euros or dollar or whatever. I can't do that. Does that fill three trucks or five trucks? I don't know. But the cost of something like a firefighting vehicle of, say, 200,000 euros, that I can understand. And if I divide this by the number of residents who ultimately pay for all this stuff, let's say 20,000, it comes down to 10 euros per person. And everybody can understand that. So the politics would have to say, okay, you want to have the firefighters a new car, no problem, we have to take a loan with the equivalent of 10 euros per person and because of interest it will be 12 euros per person, so we have to charge you with 3 additional euros per year for about 4 years. Do you want that? Yes or no? And in this very case, direct democracy work, that's, it's all easy to understand, you can uh, make a good decision, everything is fine. Could this work in a larger scale? Yeah, I think so. But if, and this is the big if, there are no big nations around. I mean, if we would break down the world into a lot of nations, all the size of, say, 20,000 people, we would end up with half a million nations. That's 400 nations alone in the space that is now known as Greater, Greater London. 
I would say that's not feasible. But in this world, divided in millions of nations, those who decide to be democratic would be very directly democratic. And that's the reason ancient Greece could do that. Because, say, Sparta was exactly this size. Athene was about double, but that's still not really big. So if you say, oh, but the Greeks could do it with no technology and thousands of years ago, keep in mind, was another time. So when I was in politics, and that's now about 10 years ago or something like that, my idea was to bring direct democracy to my little corner of the world. I put the political question at hand into the internet, and two weeks prior to the meetings, I asked the people to vote for them. And everybody had internet in this time, so they would say, oh, the, the people don't have internet, and so they couldn't participate, and no, everybody had internet. So... They had to be from the region, of course, and they had to have a uh, voting privilege, of course. But the whole other thing, the whole voting thing was anonym and there was seldom more than 20 questions a month. And most of them were quite easy. So the idea was to bring the voice of the population into the room. And the other three parties, and this was quite surprising for me to be honest, weren't hostile to this idea because more or less all of them had problems to get fresh blood and they saw this as an opportunity to recruit new people to their parties. And everybody I explained this system to was very positive and said things like, oh yeah, keep doing that, finally one of us is there and blah 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 blah. But if I said, well, okay, then register, join the system, join the platform, work with us. They started and said things like, oh, uh, no, I'm not so clever. And, you know, there are people who couldn't do that better. And but 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 keep going. <laughs> so people don't do it. And because they don't want to. And to be absolutely true, since I'm out of politics, I also don't care a lot of that. I mean, I care if it if it affects me directly. But in any other case. I could go out and get the information and I could speak to the guys sitting in the meetings because I'm still with a lot of them at first name basis and I like to talk to them, but I just don't do it. I don't invest the time. So if you want to do something, get to your local party of choice. They will welcome you with open arms and they, they won't make you chairman at the second day, <laughs> I guess, but you can go, uh, go there and do really good work. So is direct democracy something we should keep an eye on? And do you disagree with me? Leave a comment because as I said in the beginning, this is one of the topics I would love to be proven wrong. Like always guys, thanks for listening so far. Consider liking, subscribing or sharing and have a wonderful day.